Welcome to the Andy Staples Show, a special from my kitchen edition. We're talking Gators with Alan Taylor. G. Alan Taylor, when you're reading him on The Athletic. Did George? George. Glenn. Glenn. All right. Someone guessed the old style Jeff with the, the G. Oh, Jeff with the G G E O. Yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. I. It's Glenn. Well, and, and uh, you know, it could be Gervon. Gervon. That, that's yeah. the, the, for the Florida fans. Who... And I was probably a teenager when Glenn Allen, one word, Glenn Allen Hill, yeah. came through the Cubs. And I thought, man, I ought to jam that together and have I a remember thing. when Glenn Allen Hill came with the Blue Jays. That's, <laughs> that's right. If he'd have made one more All Star game, I probably would have changed that legally. You, uh, the, you That would have been awesome. Just. I, I would like to eliminate the space. And the judge is like, excuse me? And you just hand her the baseball card. Exactly. This is this is what we're doing here, lady. So, <laughs> yeah. I All right. So, Glenn Allen. Glenn Allen. Oh, I, see, if I'd have realized that, for some reason, I always thought it was George. For, for <laughs> folks who don't know, we'll, we'll get into the Gators. But this is, this is a question Eventually. I've been dying to ask Allen for a long time. So, Allen was the assistant sports editor at the Chattanooga Times Free Press when I was hired to cover Tennessee there my first job out of college in 2000. I have pieced together a pretty star studded list of people who turned down that job. Oh yeah. There, I was like the seventh or eighth choice. So Calvin beam was the, the name of the sports <laughs> editor. And when he called me, this was, this was the, I think the Monday of, or no, it was probably the, the Saturday of Labor Day weekend. Good recall. And yeah. And, and well, the, the reason why is because I had to had to move pretty fast once things got going. But it's a Saturday of Labor Day weekend, and I had applied for this job like two and a half months earlier, assumed I was definitely not getting it because nobody had called back. And out of the blue, I get a call from from the sports editor of the Chattanooga Times Free Press, and he goes, well, we've, we've been through quite a few people, and now we're down to you. And I was like, thanks. I'll take it. <laughs> He's like, I'm not know. offering it to you. Somebody has to talk oh, to you first. Jeez, is that what the Auburn hunt sounded like last year? You That's know? exactly what that. Yeah, Brian Harson's like, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. What could, what could possibly go wrong? But no, so I have pieced it together. Our, our friend George Schroeder, who used to work for USA Today, he was working for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette at the time, which was also owned by yeah. Walter Hussman Media. Yeah. Sure. They they asked that it was broached to him. He's like, heck no, I'm not I'm not taking that job. Man, when you get turned down by yeah. by Arkansas, it's, uh, 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 but my, Michael Wallace, who was was covering FAMU, I think for the the Tallahassee Democrat at the time, mm -hmm. and then went on to to cover some SEC teams and and you know do a lot more in the in the industry. There were three or four more people who were SEC beat writers at the time or, or who became very prominent SEC beat writers. And they all said no. So <laughs> and when, how I, long is that list? Well, That's I what you, I want to What know. I remember is a guy who actually said yes for really? 48 hours coming from Oklahoma or either he took the Oklahoma job. It's been so oh, many. Oh, that was George. Was that George? Oh, oh I got to talk to George In my about head, that. There was another That's name. what it was. He used yeah. that, that offer – I think got him the Oklahoma beat at the Oklahoma. Maybe that's what maybe. it was. Because yeah. I, I really don't remember you being far down the list at all. I remember you being, you know how you get to that top three and you're like, we'd be happy with any of these dudes. That's the way it, it plays in my head. Yeah, I appreciate it, that. I like it, a little revision. It, it, it wasn't it wasn't like, geez, let's go back to the stack because we've used up all our <laughs> options. You know? Do we have anybody with spell check on a laptop that yeah. would work? It was it was interesting because I I had heard you know, through the grapevine, like, oh yeah, they called me about that. And I was like, eh. and I was like, thank you. Thank you for saying, yeah, because you, you launched me. So, but and that so your first season, was it the Casey Nick's, Clawson, baby, but it was that cotton bowl or was that Nick Saban? It was cotton bowl. That was, okay. they, they, they got smoked by K state in the cotton bowl at the end of the 2000 season. Oh, so I'm thinking cotton bowl a and I'm no, no, no. Yeah. They got, they got killed by K state the following year. They probably were the second best team in the country. Uh, they lose to Georgia in the in the Hob hobnail boot Nail. game, and then and then they beat Florida, mm -hmm. but then they lose to LSU. Nick Saban's first SEC championship. Uh, they should not have lost. They had beaten LSU without LeBron and Tofield, right. without Rohan Davey. Yeah, well, it, knocking Rohan Davey yeah. out is what killed him because Matt Mock came in Incredible. and just yeah. So I had already booked the flight to the Rose Bowl that night. I was booking it at halftime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, and then it just it all went downhill because well and and I was you know I had graduated from Florida a year earlier still knew all the people on the Florida beat mm -hmm. and so a week earlier I'd been in Gainesville 
and Tennessee had beaten oh. Floyd. Because you know that that was probably Steve Spurrier's best team. Yeah. And so all that was those my first game in the swamp. By yeah. The way. Oh yeah. yeah. That's right. I remember so that. So loud. So loud. Yeah. It was. It, that was Travis Stevens running for for two hundred thirty two mm-hmm. yards or something like that. And so all the Florida beat writers. They're planning on going to the Rose Bowl. And if you cover an SEC team in, in 2001, the idea of ever covering a game in the Rose Bowl was just, you know, you, it Pretty would never enticing, happen. Yeah. So they're, <laughs> they're heartbroken. Like, they didn't care who won the game, but they're heartbroken because they don't get to go cover the Rose Bowl. And I'm like, ha ha, because Tennessee already killed LSU. And there's oh, no man. way that LSU is going to beat Tennessee. And then they did. It's like the movie It Follows, where this just passed out exactly. to the next person. And then you and I end up in Orlando at the Citrus Bowl. And, <laughs> and they what, destroyed Michigan. Oh, yeah. And every Jason snap Jason Witten running away oh, from yeah. Michigan's entire uh, secondary is my enduring just sat there the game. whole day going, what would this look like if it was in Pasadena right now? Because that could They still would have lost to Miami. Like, that Tennessee team would have would have lost by two touchdowns to Miami, but they would have made it closer than Nebraska did. Mm-hmm. Like, because, you know, John Henderson and Albert Hainsworth, they were – legit dudes i mean that d-line was great that tennessee had it might have been the only position group that stacked up against that miami team but they would have had a better shot than, than yeah. that nebraska team and i saw john che the stock in the sidelines at a usfl game uh, <laughs> on saturday and i thought we always thought he was gonna be a head coach back then no, at that point. no. you gotta like recruiting it's <laughs> a little more than he liked it i don't i don't think he was a big fan so we uh we we take you down memory lane because we we have a team that Allen covers that, that obviously I see quite a bit of mm-hmm. here in Gainesville. The Florida Gators are in flux. They are a program in flux. Billy Napier, brand new here. He's gone through his first spring. Now he's had a spring game. And I, I still got the sense mm-hmm. listening to him after that spring game, Allen, that this roster is still very much a, a work in progress. Yeah, I mean, you go from a, a two, three years ago with people saying, we're going to look at the portal, you have to look at it, to him openly saying, we're going to be open for business. We want anybody who can crack our two deep to come mm-hmm. in. And that's not, you know, that's that's not a veil blow at all. That's um, the, the two deep need some help. You had walk-ons playing the other day early, not like uh, scrub minutes at the end. And I don't know if, I don't know if there's two or three starters in September that still aren't here. I know that would probably be their preference. I'm not sure they can get that quality out of the portal this late. Right. But those there are that many jobs that well, will be and, open. And that's what's fascinating to me about the portal because it's not going to be a secret that there are spaces available mm-hmm. at Florida. And so how enticing is that to somebody? Because I'm trying to figure out what type of person is going to go for that. Now, you can't come from another SEC school to Florida because you had to be in the portal by February 1st if you wanted to transfer in conference and play right away. But anybody who's in the portal by May 1st from another conference could do it. So would we be talking about like a really good player from an American team, from a Mac team, from a Sunbelt team who says, I want to go play and try it in the SEC? Or would this be a guy who couldn't get playing time on a good Big Ten team or on mm-hmm. a good ACC or Pac-12 team who says, okay, maybe I can play there because they've, they've got some spots that, that seem open. Mm-hmm. You like those guys who have overachieved and have earned a spot versus the guys who can't play somewhere else on your level right. and are dropping down. But those those, those exist, per- right? Well, Jamison Williams, he, yeah. it wasn't he couldn't play. Yeah. It's just that he looked at the receiver room oh. in Ohio State and was like, oh, my God, this yeah. is the most stacked room yeah. in, the, in the world. Yeah. Let me go be a star anywhere else. He, Ten years from now, he still may be the poster child for why to get it in the portal and how to turn that into millions, right? Yeah. Um, the, the funny thing is we know there's tampering going on. We know there are programs and ex-coaches reaching out to guys and literally pulling them. I think what Napier has done is simply post a job vacancy. That's it. And That's say, it. if you want to come, these are the spots we need. And you don't, you don't have to tamper. You see who gets in the portal, and right. Lord knows I've got a, a right. group of guys focused on that. And I think you're going to see that from, from a lot of different programs, especially programs with the new coaches. You know, and, and What everybody wants is what Michigan State did. But the thing about Mel Tucker in Michigan State mm-hmm. is that was year two. You know, the co- He had such a weird situation because he was hired so late, and then mm-hmm. COVID hit. So it kind of felt like it was year one for him. Yeah. But he had actually had plenty of time to evaluate the roster – figure out what they need and then go get it. Mm-hmm. And this, in this case, Billy Napier has not had that much time to evaluate and then portal recruit 
in that direction. So I don't think, I think you're right. I, I, I don't think suddenly they're going to have a super deep receiving room or a super deep linebacker room mm -hmm. just because they said, Hey, these jobs are open. Yeah. What it can do is you can find, you know, they, they took a project from Louisiana and Cameron waits. Yes. The backup right tackle. The kid had not played much high school football. He's six, seven, didn't get on the field last year at Louisiana at all. So you bring him in. Um, sorry. He wasn't at Louisiana last year. Uh, but he was a commitment or signee. So I think they can also build that way so yeah. that they're helping out 2023, mm -hmm. 2024. Uh, but, but I'm telling you, I know there's, there's this, I feel like within our company, even there's this feeling that, Oh, well, Florida will just snap back. Yeah. I don't, I don't get that. And I don't get that nine or yeah. 10 wins because Napier's there. There will be a culture shift. Yep. That'll be good. But culture shifts don't, well, I think, track down SEC receivers and yeah, exactly. block Will Anderson. And know? I think I think what made what makes Florida weird and what makes this whole situation weird is they were so successful in the first three years under Dan Mullen. Mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to look at it and say this roster is not good enough to compete mm -hmm. in the SEC. And but it isn't. And that and that is primarily why Dan Mullen got fired. It's it's why he got fired when he got fired. The, the people in charge looked at the roster and said, oh, so this is a, a problem that goes back several years, but it was being masked mm -hmm. by the results thanks to Kyle Trask, Kyle mm -hmm. Pitts, and Dan Mullen being a very good on-field yeah. strategist. So that's the part that I think people from outside probably miss is that this was a problem for a few years mm -hmm. that maybe didn't get recognized until it was too late. Yeah. Like you see the supply chain issues. Yes. That's exactly right. Before the shelves are empty, you know, all and the players are sitting in the port <laughs> or sitting off the port of Los Angeles. You're just waiting exactly. to be unloaded. Exactly. So, so I, you know, and plus I think at one point last year, going into last year, Florida's uh, talent ranking, once you added transfers was top seven. Their, right. their recruiting overall wasn't right, but their portal guys like Justin Shorter coming in elevated their talent Justin level. Justin Shorter, Lorenzo Lingard, Demarcus Bowman, those are those are three five stars. Yeah, so that really helps. But your you're rating. not getting five star production you're out not, of them. You're, you're not. not. Shorter is, is going to produce. Yeah, Shorter will be a produced. starter. Demarcus, you know, a couple fumbles the other night. They're still waiting for him to break out. He's the fastest running back they have, our, our slipperiest. And Lingard is the fastest point A to B, but he doesn't have enough wiggle to make guys miss. And he pulled a hammy the other night. So we'll see what they get out of those guys. Um, but the roster right now is less talented than it was a year ago today. And that doesn't mean it's a worse team. I'm just saying that right. the speed of receiver is not there. The depth at some positions, even on the defensive front, is not there. Well, and, and, and like linebacker, mm -hmm. like uh, Mahmoud Diabate, he's going to be starting for Utah when Utah shows up in the swamp for the season opener. They would die to have him. Mm -hmm. They would love to have him back. But – he, he you know, looked at it and was like, okay, I'm going to go try somewhere else. And, you know, look, I, I don't blame anybody who's been in a program for a while where their coach gets fired and, and maybe you want to go look for, for something else. But they, they just don't have the guys that, that they used to have. And, and like in the must champ years, it was a case of coaching them, not necessarily mm -hmm. a case of the, the raw talent being there. Uh, I, I feel like maybe I've been a little unfair to Jim McElwain because <laughs> maybe they were more competitive roster wise, but I, I looked at them losing to Florida state the way they did when, when Jimbo had it going at Florida state and thinking, okay, that they're, they're not, they're not talented enough to compete for national titles with this group. Mm -hmm. And maybe they would have been as it had, they kept going, but it didn't seem like it. And then you look at Georgia and Alabama and, and the LSU team that won the national title and you go, no, 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 none yeah. of those teams would have competed with them. Which is the, the big anomaly of the whole thing is that somehow it's 52-46 in Atlanta. Yes, they were that close. And then last year it's 31-29 in the Swamp, and either one of those games go the other way, and quite frankly, you probably don't have a coaching change because no. of the butterfly effect that goes down. Um, but overall, there's no disputing that Florida played above their heads those nights to stay on the field with those mm -hmm. guys. So I think Florida right now is – and also, they do have some very good players. Yeah, they're on the. Yeah. When we say they can't compete in the SEC, they can't compete to win it. They can compete to be five hundred in the SEC and maybe seven and five. Maybe t ceiling for me would be eight and four, but I'm I'm thinking more six and six. They just, they just, they can't get double digit wins and get to Atlanta. Well, I'll I'll tell you, I, there is. I do think there is a way for them to be better than people think. That there's one great equalizer, and REI talk about this on the show all the time. 
if you have a special quarterback, mm-hmm. it makes all the difference. It changes all the math. My question is whether Anthony Richardson can be that because from a tool standpoint, you look at him and you go, this guy is 6'5", he's 240, he can run, he he throws. Because usually those big guys, they don't throw the ball with ease. They've got some sort of weird like mm-hmm. sidearm motion or he throws the ball well. Yeah. And then, but we've only seen him in, you know, spurts and you've seen flashes of brilliance and you've seen stuff that makes mm-hmm. you go, oh, I don't know if he's ready. But can he can he develop into that guy? Well, everybody, you know, proceeds to their own journey, right? He's in the same year developmentally as Bryce Young is. Mm-hmm. And you would think they're on different planets developmentally. Right. Uh, but that's fine. I mean, Kyle that Trask, happens. Tra- yeah. Kyle Trask was probably four years in before he got his break. So that's that's not a big thing. Mac, Mac Jones, right. obviously. Felipe Franks is one that, that everybody in the recruiting mm-hmm. world said, this guy needs three years in your program before mm-hmm. you, uh, you put him on the field. Mm-hmm. Florida put him on the field in year two, and you saw what happened. Yeah, and with Anthony, you know – I don't even think it's a tool thing because the tools are all there, right? It's simply who has he showed out against? He looked really good against FAU, USF, mm-hmm. and LSU. Right. Those are the, the three Which, things. That LSU defense was not great. Yeah. yeah. Those, those are the three you're hanging your hat on. Georgia, no, never had a, never had a shot to get anything going. Uh, couldn't be a difference maker. And, uh, you know, didn't do a lot against FSU, although obviously they won the, the ball game. So we'll see uh, what he can do. He, he's got a, a huge leap. I know the staff looked at him, and they they had the same moment that a lot of us have, which is, oh, crap, that's that's legit body. Yes. That's a legit Superman-type yeah. body. I, I think Let's make it work. He's one, he's one that any coach in the world will come in and say, I can, I can work yeah. with him. I can fix whatever issues I can fix. Whether that happens or not is another mm-hmm. story. But he's one that'll he'll get as many chances as he can get. Now, uh, don't need to be driving so fast. Uh, oh my that's r- right on the road out here where where that happened. I was wondering uh, how far that is from the Staples residence. Yeah, no, I was no, trying no. to well, put together that that part of Newberry Road really invites you to open it up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I might have sped on that. that Wasn't there an of- LSU player once who got arrested? For driving 135 in a school zone, he said, I had to get rid of some bad gas. I just pumped in $3 of bad gas, and I was trying uh, to flush it out. That's <laughs> that's going back like three decades. Yeah, see, that's but, bad. That's it, an the, all-time the, excuse. The school zone thing. Like, <laughs> at least this was on a, a road where the, I think the speed limit's 60. And he but, had a mandatory breakfast coming up, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah, well. At 6 a.m. But, no, and, and, and that's what I couldn't figure out is, is that a good thing or a bad thing for the dealership that, that has the NIL deal? Because you've shown – the capability of the vehicle, but not in the best way that you possibly could have. <laughs> if only so, the police report had said it went from zero to one Oh five in three seconds. Yeah. Then I think Anthony. Could and I realize we're, we're making light. We're having fun. I've, I've been that age driving way too fast. Mm-hmm. I also live near where he got pulled over. And if I were driving out there at 4 AM would be stunned to see a cop. So <laughs> I, I, that, that was, that part of it is, uh, you know, it doesn't excuse it, but I'm not going to destroy the guy yeah. right now. This is not a Henry Ruggs situation where he was, you know, Henry mm-hmm. Ruggs was blackout drunk and, and yeah. all that. So this is this is one where it's it's a mistake. And it's one of those things that you got to got to be careful when you're Florida's quarterback, because I, I, I think that's one of those. If he's the starting left guard, that's not even news. Nobody cares. Sure. And it's one of these things where you start stacking it on what happened last year. Injured his leg dancing. Repeated. I could not have done that. Comments. Dance. Neither could he. Apparently, yeah. uh, repeated uh, comments by Garrett McGee that the guy needed to grow up and be mature. Same thing from Dan Mullen, based on playing time. That was clearly the message he was sending. So you add it on to last year, and suddenly you're like, okay, has he made that jump yet to where he's ready to be the face of the program and do all the things? I've seen the guy out at Celebration Point just hanging and signing autographs. And you would have thought he was an NFL guy the way he handled it and did all that. Yeah. So I don't think it's this yeah, big the, pervasive. The, deal, the dealing with fans and that's where he seems to have that part yeah. kind of down. So that's the thing. He's kind of the key mm-hmm. to everything yeah. because if he's good, then they can be better. Then the, they can beat Utah. They can beat Kentucky. Mm-hmm. If he's average, they won't beat Utah. They won't beat Kentucky. And people will act like the sky is falling, even though they've probably see I, I got I, I got on a fine bomb the other day and, and and said that Florida has the toughest opening duo of any school in the country. 
and people are, oh, what are you talking about? And I'm like, have you any of you watched Utah play? Like, they kicked yeah. Oregon's ass twice last year, and Oregon has a really good roster, especially up front. So this is not a you know soft team that's good. This is a team that will kick your butt if you're not ready for them. And they spent the Rose Bowl playing what with running backs at corner. Yes, yeah, and they had to they had to you know Cam Rising went out and they had to put the backup quarterback and he throws a touchdown pass like, but yeah. And that's a that's the program that's had the same coach, has some continuity, has some expectations. I still think that's one that Florida might steal based on pure energy and the fact that Utah will not have seen what Florida's got, whereas yeah. everyone it also that might be have noon. Something. In August, yeah, or September, yeah. I can't remember what what the date is. What's the reverse? Of it's hot playing at altitude. Yeah, it's yeah, just the other thing. It's real hot play playing at hundred percent humidity. So yeah, that that part, I I think Florida may have a shot there. Kentucky, you know, we'll see what mm -hmm. Kentucky is, but they they're they changed offensive coordinators. He he went back. Liam Cohen went back to the Rams, but they brought in somebody from the 49ers. Same tree essentially. Uh, I had Will Levis on the radio the other day. He said it's very similar that yeah. they, they've not had much trouble picking it up. So uh, I would expect Kentucky comes in into Gainesville pretty tough. Tennessee is going to be just hair on fire ready for Florida at this point. Uh, and that, that's what Florida's dealing with mm -hmm. now. Like they, they're still like with Tennessee, they're still the team that beats up on them all the time. That Tennessee's only beaten once since 2000 or, you know, once since 2004. And, they're going to be out to get them. Yeah. And if you're not good and they're better, that's that's a tough spot to be in. That game last year, I, I think that was what that was coming off the Alabama game, I believe. Yeah. And they just destroyed them in the swamp. Uh, Tennessee had two breakaway uh, plays that basically Early on, did yeah. most of their stuff, and that was it. Um, that's the one that you really made you feel like, well, they learned from the Alabama game and Florida was on a trajectory to yeah, win. Yeah, that game doesn't make any sense because the, the two teams went completely opposite yeah. directions after that game. Mm-hmm. Probably the guys who were doing the bicycle on the uh, sidelines. That gets us uh, <laughs> some sort of That's, weird yeah. karma uh, there. Uh, yeah, that game didn't make any sense. Uh, always good. I like that Tennessee Florida rivalry. I hope that when this inevitable three primary opponents thing mm -hmm. comes with Oklahoma, Texas, yeah. that Tennessee Florida remains one of the. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about that because that was a product of divisions, the rivalry mm -hmm. itself, and it became a great rivalry because. Tennessee and Florida happened to be the best two teams in the league mm -hmm. at the time, but it has become a fun. I, the thing is, is it fun to Tennessee? Cause, cause you know, even when Tennessee was really good in the nineties, mm -hmm. Florida still wow. won most of the games. The hump they couldn't get over most years. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Florida, Georgia's there. I would like to see Florida LSU stay, but I don't know if Florida's I, three will be Tennessee. I don't think Georgia, Florida LSU. wants that. And I don't think LSU wants it either. I, but but the SEC, that is a marquee game. It is, but and to give it away well, half the you, year but you, but you in exchange make, for Florida, South Carolina. But I see, I would want LSU playing. So I want LSU playing A and M every year. Sure, I want that. And Ole Miss because they hate each other. Like I mm -hmm. want that hatred. I'd then put LSU with like Oklahoma or Texas. Well, I hate. To, I uh, this is the problem with SEC football when you start doing this. LSU Alabama not being played every year is a completely foreign concept to me. And somehow that could happen mm -hmm. um, if Alabama goes. There's always a, a trail, right? If a wormhole. Alabama is, will have Tennessee and Auburn for, Auburn sure, for sure. And then who else do they and have? And then either yeah. LSU or Mississippi State. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's it's going to be that. I'm telling you that those meetings in Destin mm -hmm. or wherever in Birmingham where they figure that out will be a fist fight. It, I and then and then the, just the jockeying to get Vandy in your three. <laughs> Because Tennessee's going to be sitting here going, well, I mean, in-state rival, come on. How about them? Yeah, yeah that's got to happen. Uh, yeah, it, it, there's so many things because you, you pick your three in a vacuum and then you realize it screws up another three from over here. Well, and you also just can't – like because you could make Auburn the most miserable place to play in the history because they have rivalries with everybody. Like Florida, Florida fans would love to play Auburn oh, every yeah. year. That it was used one to be of, a big one. That was one of the fan base's favorite rivalries. Went away because of, of the way the divisions worked out. But if you're Auburn, you're like, no, please, no, because you got to have Alabama and Georgia. So like, you got to give Auburn Vandy with, with Alabama and Georgia as the other ones. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you're looking at it too. 
you're not going to duck anybody for seven or eight years like you used to. It's going to be a revolving two year right. deal. You're going to get, you're going to, everybody you don't see, you're still yeah. going to see them twice every four years. Yeah. And if you go to a nine game schedule, obviously, then it sort of mitigates the fact that you might have three really tough teams. It's going to be interesting to play out because somebody's going to get stuck with one that makes zero sense, yes. like South Carolina, Arkansas, or something just <laughs> dumb. And you're like, South Carolina and Arkansas, they're like, you came in at the same time. You did. <laughs> so, you both were the last two to pick up your name tags. So you're <laughs> in the table, exactly. playing poker in the back. Um, so it, it doesn't make sense. I hope they can find a way to do it. That that doesn't sever a couple of really good rivalries. Yeah, it's it, it, it will be fascinating, but it will start some new ones too. Like, who does Oklahoma end up having beef with? Who who does Texas end up having? Well, we know Texas and Texas A and M will end up having beef together. But you know who who else do they pick up? Do they suddenly like? I, I just want some weird like Texas Mississippi State rivalry to form where they right. just hate each other. Cowbells and Bevo <laughs> yes. and they're trying to get the guy jump started. I mean, what if something in Texas Florida happens? We got the two biggest recruiting states in the footprint, and they have to play every year. I mean, that could be something that oh. would, it wouldn't make sense. From what we know, but who would past. who would who would say no? Yeah. Like who says no to that? Florida fans, would you like to go to Austin every other year? Like, oh. yeah, they'll they'll do that. It'd be incredible. I mean, all the you know the kids that Florida tries to recruit out of Texas, yeah. uh, some with success, some not so much. Uh, it's just right there, man. And you could the recruiting sidelines and the visitors' passes at those games would be pretty. Oh, they'd be a hot ticket. Well, and, okay, let's talk about that with Billy Napier because the reason Florida spring game was on a Thursday. Let's be honest. It wasn't because they wanted the students there because they were leaving for Easter. It <laughs> Easter was on Sunday in Alabama and Georgia too, but Alabama and Georgia had their spring games. And if you try to, you know, compete against that, a lot of the people you want to come are not going to pick you if you're if you're where Florida is right now. And I thought it was a it was an interesting gesture of humility on the part of the old Gators who have not been given to gestures of humility mm -hmm. over the years. Uh, and if you looked at the sideline during the, the spring game and after the spring game, they had a significant number of players that, that they wanted to come see and, and wanted to get a chance to talk to. Yeah, 300 plus. I mean, you know, you're talking two, three classes down. I think there might have even been an eighth or ninth grader uh, <laughs> there in the stands as well. Uh, why not? I mean, you're going to be on ESPN Plus or SEC Network Plus streaming on Saturday. Why not at least have that? full exposure on Thursday night to to do it uh, that way. So I, I think it worked out. It was actually perfect weather. Uh, Saturday during the day would not have been any better. Um, and I think it, it gave you that window, and that came a year after Mullen didn't want to have any spring game. and was one of three schools in the SEC that just ran some sort of stock behind-the-scenes junk that wasn't even watchable yeah. and really missed an opportunity there to recruit. Well, they missed an opportunity to recruit and an opportunity to engage with their fans. Like that, that's one thing I, I, all of these coaches need to understand that they're in the entertainment business mm -hmm. and the season tickets at George and Alabama sell themselves. They used to sell themselves at Florida too. Mm -hmm. They don't anymore. Mm -hmm. you, you need to find a way to, to get these people excited and get them engaged and get them to fall in love with your team. And, you know, I, I think Billy Napier for the most part has done and said the right things to, to that effect. But they need to find a way to advertise this thing a little more. And and yeah. now winning solves mm -hmm. all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of that, and, it, and like you said, it may be a year before they feel like the roster's in a place where they can win like that. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, yeah, I'll be curious to see what they do here in the next you know four or five months to, to kind of get the, the word out because mm – -hmm. That that stuff with the fans, it also generates buzz with recruits, you know. And and I do think, you know, you look at Kamari Wilson was a was a good example of right after Billy Napier gets in. This is sure. a player who, who Georgia wanted, who picked Florida. That hasn't happened very much lately, and it does seem like he's going to be going head to head or attempting to go head to head with Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State schools like that. You haven't seen Florida beating them out for players much. Mm -hmm. If they can, who knows? Yeah, and the reason that thing was on a streaming uh, subscription service this time was the move came it so didn't, late. They didn't move. They'd already yeah. scheduled softball, I, yeah. What's to prevent Billy from talking this out a year and two years in the future, saying we'll take that Thursday every year yeah. and we'll actually be on the SEC yeah. network? And mic, mic me up like you mic up Nick yeah. Saban. Like, yeah. that, that's the thing. I mean, he seems to have a personality that, that people seem to like. Mm -hmm. So 
Why not? He's accommodating. I mean, to the extent that we had coffee in the press box for the first time in two years. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give Rick Hurtado the, oh, the nod yeah. on that one. Rick Hurtado, the Florida's uh, sports information director, uh, got got tossed into a fairly tough situation when he got the job, and you know, coming out in spades, <laughs> yes. hooking the media up with yes. coffee. But it's a top down. It's a top down. You know, he's uh, Rick's worried about the media experience, just like Billy's worried about the player experience. The, the player experience, and that, that has a, been a topic. I mean, you they've got all these new staffers. You did a really good story on Katie Turner, who. Uh, they hired away from Georgia, who's kind of the I mean, she she pretty much runs recruiting for them. Yeah. And I'm curious because the number itself is not as big as everybody thinks. Like it's I mean, it was about 15 percent larger staff, mm. but it feels like the roles are more clearly defined. Yeah. And he does have something like 20 student interns positions that. Uh, Mullen didn't make use of. But it also you say, well, big deal, student interns. That's what Pickler was at yeah. Clemson. Mm -hmm. That's how Katie Turner got started at Alabama to some degree. That's how Bird Sherrill got started. I think he's Bird, Bird Sherrill's in the, the, basically one of their transfer portal yeah, guys. Yeah, portal in, guy in who came office. from the Detroit Lions and been in Alabama cutting up film, and he he puts together a plan if some guy goes in the portal to to who needs to contact him within two hours and get that ball rolling. Um, that's his full job. Uh, so yeah, those, those, those numbers of the students will push it up more, but the paying positions are yeah very clearly defined. The flow chart is there and everybody knows what they've got to do and they can really focus on that and do it well. That's, and that's the thing. I remember talking to Nick Saban about that back in 2012 for a story I was doing on his organizational organizational structure. And he said once a year, he evaluates not just the people in the organization, but the positions and basically rewrites the job description for for each one and i thought man because you know, we've worked at some places where they don't really give you a clear picture of exactly what they want from you mm -hmm. and as an employee that would make my job a lot better yeah like just say here's what we want and and, and here's how to gauge and measure yeah. your success actually the athletic is probably the best of the media companies i've worked oh, for yeah. at explaining that to us like that yeah. that's not something that, that was explained very well in other places no it wasn't and, you know some years you'd be covering a state tournament in high school and some years you'd be covering a pro golf tournament it was just like who's available and who's not on vacation that week versus this is what you can do so you can plan it out 11 12 months in advance and get on it and that's what he's done is add people but not just people for the sake of people he added them with specific roles and i think that's why Scott Strickland zeroed in on him really after one meeting, which you can say, hey, you should have taken a bigger swing. I feel like he was zeroed in on before that <laughs> before that one meeting. It 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 seemed like he was the guy. And and look, obviously Scott Strickland had been doing due diligence. I I think it's it's pretty clear that the due diligence began after the South Carolina loss last year, mm -hmm. and and they they were starting to kind of cut down that list. And and Napier's one that it was interesting in SEC circles because he he looked at he kicked the tires on South Carolina. Uh, he'd gone down the road a little bit with Auburn when those jobs were open. And in Mississippi State, so rarely does someone stay at the Sun Belt job mm -hmm. when, it, when even one of those is yeah. a possibility. So, you know, he was looking, he was looking for the right situation and he felt like this was the one. So I, I will be fascinated to see what he does because it does seem like, and this is everybody keeps asking, well, you know, now they're going to compete with Alabama and Georgia, right? And I'm like, they're doing they've now gotten the cost of admission paid or mm -hmm. so they're doing the baseline whether that works or not is whether you're good enough to out recruit kirby smart or nick saban mm -hmm. but at least you're you're in a fair fight yeah and you know i keep bringing up this facility and i keep getting kicked because i've been referencing it for a year or two but that's going to be a huge thing that's the last i call that the last excuse yeah yeah you you, you put build that facility you have the same kind of facilities as everybody else. It takes that excuse away. And then yeah. you're just, yeah. you're, you should feel like you're on a level playing field at yeah. that point. For, for that team to come in or for that staff to come in, you could not arrive at a better time because you're going to be compared to a staff that didn't have it. And now you do have it and you know how to maximize things and from the top down, better recruit relationships than, uh, than Mullen did. So that'll, that'll help. But yeah, you got to go out there and win them and, when NIL dollars start flowing, are you in that same salary pool? Yeah, as as the bigger and, and that's an, that's another one where uh, again taking away the last excuse because a lot of Florida people get high. Well, we, we don't we don't do that, 
you did that before, not maybe not to the extent of other yeah. places, but I mean, you, you played the game just like everybody in the SEC yeah. plays the game. But now that there's no stigma, just go do it. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's what Alabama and Georgia are going to do. That's what Tennessee is doing. Like just the, the rules have changed. Yeah. Adapt. <laughs> yeah. And they'll change again in two or three years to some yeah. degree. But for now, you can't get left behind. And, and we'll see what, you know, what they get a collective, what market price and, and uh, outfits like that can, can get accomplished. Um, but, you know, it wasn't supposed to be for, for performance, but it is for performance. Yeah. Be. And it's, and I don't even know why we're dancing around. I saw someone criticizing Tennessee for giving, uh, allegedly giving someone $8 million. And I said, well, it's their salary cap. Let right. them distribute it like they right. want. If he you want it, players should get paid. Good, that's... And now you're telling them they're going to yeah. pay too much. Yeah. I mean, you open the capitalistic market to these guys, and it's yeah. going to be what if it is. If he doesn't wind up being good, then they wasted their money. And that's, listen, there's an entire industry where people start companies and people invest in those companies. And most of those companies don't work. <laughs> but every once in a while, mm-hmm. they go gangbusters. Yeah. And, and then the venture capitalists, makes their money back and, mm-hmm. and then and then some so it's not that different it's really what we're talking about yeah. here so yeah. and again a lot of this money had been under the table at places and now yeah. it's coming above the table and it's traceable so to, to, i don't understand why there's suddenly a, a, a pearl clutching over the amount of dollars that a quarterback gets although i understand a 17 year old kid who's never produced in college probably not worth it but that's what the market says. Yeah, is it's worth not the day. my money. Like yeah. you want to, you want to spend your money on that. Yeah. I'm not going to criticize. I mean, like, do, you, do you know what news anchors get paid? Do you know what these <laughs> actors get paid exactly. for showing up and putting on an Iron Man suit for yeah. two minutes? I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. So. No, I, I mean, listen, uh, me, I'm going to invest that money in a stake because I get a stake. <laughs> but that, if you want to invest it in a quarterback, then you go right ahead. That's, <laughs> that's your, your money. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but I, I am fascinated by what this group is going to do because Billy Napier, seems to have laid out a very coherent plan and seems to have put people in places where they can execute that plan. Mm -hmm. But what makes it difficult is there's somebody in Athens already executing it at the highest level. There's somebody in Tuscaloosa already executing it at the highest level. The guy who just got hired at Miami has the same plan, apparently has the same checkbook available to him now, (laughs) which I never would have thought would, you know, Miami Mm -hmm. would do. And he has some very talented people to execute that plan. It ain't going to be easy. It's not. They're they're not all going to win. It's not. And it's not, you know, you go back to Saban. They lost to La Monroe his first year and they barely cracked 500 at the end. And then they immediately turned it around. I don't, I don't know that Florida is even a two-year rebuild to that extent right. of being in the SEC to where, championship to where you're, Yeah, to where you're very yeah. competitive at the yeah. national level. Year it might two. be year three before they can reasonably be expected to beat Georgia and be in there. And that would mean some really good 2023 freshmen producing. Well, it also would mean a Michigan State-style turnaround in the portal, and that's what Nick Saban didn't have. Mm-hmm. You know, He had to put together maybe the best recruiting class of all time in, in 2008. You don't have to be that – you, you have to get really good recruits in 2023 if you're Billy Napier, but you don't have to be perfect. Like you, there are going to be guys you can get out of the portal. And if your team plays hard, and you, they're not great, mm-hmm. but if they if they play hard, they seem to be enjoying playing there. Other players see that. I think that's one thing with the Mel Tucker thing. You know, they, they only won two games in 2020, but they were two. They, they beat Michigan and they beat Northwestern. Was maybe the two best teams on their schedule other than Ohio State. I can't I can't remember if that game got played in 2020. It's like, did they play but, five or six games that year? Yeah. So they they kind of played above their played out of their shoes on those mm-hmm. games. And the players seem to like playing for Mel Tucker. I don't think it was an accident that sure. that was a place some good players wanted to go. Mm hmm. So if you're Billy Napier, you got to create that environment where players talk, word gets around. Hey, this is a place where mm-hmm. you know you can you can maximize yourself. That would help, you know, and that would that would allow you to turn around quicker. So yeah, you're talking about better food. You're talking about better housing. There's an initiative to get those guys in better athletic housing facilities, and obviously the uh, the, the great last excuse, as you well put it, on the standalone football facility. All that's there, and that's stuff that doesn't just benefit you during the fall. That's stuff that benefits you every day you're on campus, mm-hmm. and 
makes life better and makes you more productive and helps get you to the league if you're willing to jump in on it. Yeah, so I, I will be fascinated to see what they do because they, they have – they're going to have the tools in place, especially once that the facility's in, that, you know, because that, that is something that everybody's used against Florida and with, with, with good reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other – a lot of the other SEC programs have had facilities like this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So – it's it is something that that has been used against the Gators. I can't use it, and we'll see. They 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 got a bunch of good players in the state, a bunch of people in the transfer portal. Probably the question is, what can they do in the next few months to make sure that first year goes? And and I that will be one of the more interesting yeah. side side plots of SEC football is. Who do the SEC teams like Florida get over the next month or two coming out of spring practice from other leagues? Mm -hmm. And who and who exits those SEC teams yeah. to other leagues? Because I think Florida, as you mentioned, they're going to be a lot flowing both ways. Yeah. And outside of the Big Ten, I think every college football player in America realizes that if you go to the SEC, you are taking a massive step up. They call it big boy football for a reason. So, you know, the ACC schools, the Pac-12 schools, uh, Big 12 schools are, are definitely there. And as you mentioned earlier, the group of five well, teams so, that might yeah, feed up. If you're recruiting in the SEC into the portal, you can say, look, you, this is a bet on yourself proposition. Mm -hmm. If you play well here, your draft stock will be very high. And that's and, – and obviously you can get drafted out of any FBS league. We will see – Somebody drafted from every FBS league. We'll see people drafted from the group of five in the first round. But the SEC has had the most draft picks every year. If you're good in the SEC, the NFL will, will find you and probably pick yeah. you early. So if I'm Billy Napier, I'm selling that real, real hard in these next few weeks. It's there. It's there. But, you know, that's the thing. I've never heard a coach refer to post-spring as exit interviews. I've heard him say exit interviews in December. Yeah. I've never heard exit interviews used. That's because they play it on some people exiting. <laughs> That's like, exactly right. It's about three months past the December. Yeah. We've got two rounds of exit interviews yeah. now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, they, they're playing it on some people exiting. That's why. We'll see who that is, and, uh, and we'll see who they bring in. And uh, Alan will be here writing about all of it. I'll be, uh, I'll be writing about it. And it's a, it's a time of change in Gainesville. <laughs>